Good morning, and welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday in Easter. My name is Seth Novak, and I'm the pastor of Anya Stay Lutheran Church. On behalf of the entire community of Anya Stay, I'd like to thank you for being a part of our worship this morning. Our building may be closed, but as you can see, the church is still very much open. Our worship bulletin with the order of service can be downloaded from the link in the video description below. I invite you to take a moment to do that now if you haven't already, so you can follow along. And before we begin our worship, um, we'd like to share prayer concerns of the community. Um, this morning, uh, we'd like to lift up prayers of thanksgiving uh, for Rose Vanderklomp and her family. Uh, Rose welcomed a new great-granddaughter, uh, Riley May. So congrats to, uh, to Rose and to her granddaughter, Courtney, who's the mother. Uh, we're very happy to, uh, to be able to announce that today. Um, today also is kind of a special day. Uh, throughout the year, we uh, have different commemorations of saints and people important to the church. And today, um, we recognize two people who you may not uh, recognize from church, but whose names you probably know, Nicholas Copernicus and Leonard Euler. Uh, both scientists um, credited uh, together with the discovery of calculus or the the invention of calculus you might say um, so we remember uh, Nicholas Copernicus and Leonard Euler and the great contributions they made to uh, to science uh, this day on our calendar also today is a special day for another reason I'd like to wish a uh, I'd like to wish Eid Mubarak to our uh, Muslim siblings out there uh, today is Eid, uh, the end of the month, holy month of Ramadan, and um, my heart is especially with our, our Muslim siblings this morning because um, they, like us Christians and our, our Jewish siblings, have had to celebrate this month of Ramadan uh, mostly in isolation um, without being able to gather with, with families, uh, as many of us celebrated Passover and Easter. And so... Um, like to uh, hold them in our prayers today as well. I invite you to turn with me to our worship bulletin as we continue our worship. There we go. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to join me in our hymn of praise. Peace to the land. 
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn to your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 1, 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading today comes from the 17th chapter of John's Gospel. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all, to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to all those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, 
but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I am so tired of Zoom meetings. And I think I'm probably not the only one, right? During this quarantine time, many of us have been relying on Zoom or some other video chat platform not only to work, but even to see families or friends. We spent so much time on the computer that the shine is kind of worn off of this thing. It's a wonderful technology, but it has its limits. There have been several articles written about the extra work that Zoom and these other platforms force us to do. In a Zoom meeting, you're always on, for example. We don't have those natural, comfortable breaks in conversation that happen in physical gatherings. We're pressured to fill those breaks because we're always looking at one another. And yet, even as we do that, we are never making eye contact. That simple, powerful connection between two people. And there are other body language cues that we miss when we communicate across cyberspace as well. And our brains end up having to work overtime trying to read people on the screen as they naturally would in real life. From the very beginnings of this stay-at-home order, I've been curious about how this time will shape our interactions in the future, once the danger that presented by the virus has been mitigated or eliminated. At first, I wondered if suddenly all of us becoming fluent in this new virtual way of being would make people more likely to work from home, or visit friends from home, or even shop from, uh, worship from home. After all, I mean, why get dressed up and go out when we can just pop open the computer, right? But the longer this goes on, the more I think that we are all going to be so exhausted from this extra work required by telepresence that people may actually be able, more eager to gather in physical space than we were before this all started. Now I wonder if when this is all over, we may actually give up some of those virtual interactions that we're used to, things like shopping on Amazon or ordering delivery or using an ATM, simply so that we can have another excuse to interact with real people. Even my own introverted self is starting to suffer from the lack of personal contact. Normally, I'm completely happy to spend my days off, sequestered in my office, reading or playing computer games. And I've generally been very happy with this new socially distanced routine. I get to come and sit in my hole all day and be in my own little world. But I'm also beginning to notice that I'm more restless, more irritable, more lethargic, because I'm not getting that chance to actually be around other people. Even with all the Zoom meetings and the webinars that I attend every week. Virtual interactions have been a lifesaver. But in the end, I think we're finding that they are still a poor substitute for physically being together. These things are on my mind this week because we have just on Thursday observed the Feast of the Ascension. The Ascension is an odd little holiday in which we celebrate the day that Jesus left. That's a strange thing to celebrate, isn't it? And as such, it's never been a very big deal on the church's calendar. Ascension Day reminds us that while the first disciples got to know Jesus and spend time with him in physical space, we have a relationship with Jesus that's been more like speaking on Zoom. We've been on Zoom with Jesus our whole lives. It's a poor substitute for having him physically here with us, but it's better than nothing. This virtual connection with God is all we've ever known. It's all we ever expect to know. Imagine for a moment that this quarantine was to last for decades or centuries. Imagine never having known shaking a stranger's hand when you meet, or hugging a friend, or sitting down to lunch with colleagues. In a way, Ascension invites us to reflect on how sad and sorry this whole state of affairs is. In light of this, I think that this quarantine has actually helped us see how important physical contact is with others, and how important physical gatherings are. But I also think that no matter what poor substitutes they might be, 
Quarantine has taught us that virtual gatherings are just as real as physical ones. Yes, we're all tired of Zoom and Google Hangouts and FaceTime, but neither can we imagine trying to do all of this without them. Instead of being completely cut off from friends and family and co-workers, at least we still have this tenuous, imperfect lifeline between us. As frustrating and as exhausting as it may be, we're still grateful for that. Throughout John's Gospel account, every word of the narrative that the evangelist uses points to intimacy. Words like father and son, know, abide, love, one. We're reminded that Jesus' entire purpose in becoming human and living among us is to reveal God to us, to connect us to his Father, to share God's love with us so that we might be able to abide with God as he does. After the ascension, we remember that even now, Jesus is in God's very presence, praying for us. And because of our connection to him through his love, so are we. He is the vine, and we are the branches. Granted, this is kind of a Zoom-like vine at this point, but it's still a real connection, even if Jesus isn't here with us in the flesh. And yet, alongside the grief and the pain and the frustration of his absence, there's also a promise, right? This Jesus, whom you, whom has been, uh, who you, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. Much like all those Zoom meetings and virtual happy hours and FaceTime calls with family are getting us through this period, as we look forward to a time when we can be together in person again, Jesus' prayer today and his message of the abiding love of God also remind us that this painfully virtual connection to God, the only connection we've ever known, is not all there is. One day, our quarantine period will be over. God's reign will be fully realized here on earth, just as it is in heaven. But it's not our place to know when or how. Much like our present situation in quarantine, we all have to find ways of dealing with this reality. Some of us prefer to sit back and wait, paying no attention to what's going on around us here and now because we think it's not real, not important. So what if the world is burning up, we say? Who cares if people are oppressing and enslaving and killing one another? God will show up eventually and put everything to rights. So until then, eat, drink, and be merry. But to live this way denies the love and the passion that God has put into being with us now. It refuses to love the world as God loves it. It's like refusing to Zoom or even write letters or talk on the phone with someone because you'd rather wait until you can see them in person, even if that time is decades or lifetimes away. Others of us want to be proactive. We believe that we can bring God's reign into existence, and we will keep on pushing and shoving until we get it here. We begin to imagine ourselves as the saviors of the world. We're like the people protesting the stay-at-home orders and refusing to wear masks in public. We think we're fixing the problem, not realizing that we're only poking at the symptoms. We fail to see that climate change and racism and war and poverty and hunger and oppression, that these are all just the symptoms of a world that is held in the grip of a pandemic of sin. We can no more save the world from sin than a protest can cure the coronavirus. Only God can save us. Instead of these things, God calls us to patiently and persistently and intentionally live in the time in which we find ourselves. Jesus prays that we might come to know that through God's love made flesh, we have already been given real unity with God, even if it is virtual, and that we might continue to experience that unity by continuing to live in that love. God's love will not let us sit idly by, doing nothing but drinking and binging Netflix. Although that's not to say that some of that may not be a bad way to spend time at home. But neither does that love compel us to go out and try to accomplish something that's beyond our ability to do. 
During this COVID quarantine, lots of people have been taking up new hobbies. Gardening, mending clothing, knitting, learning a new language. They've been spending extra time with family or making an effort to reconnect with people with whom they've lost contact. They found ways to use this time as a gift, to use it uh, to enrich themselves for what's coming next. Those new skills and activities will hopefully change their post-COVID lives for the better. The gospel encourages us to remember that just like this quarantine, we live in liminal space, a time between what is and what will be. The time between Easter and Pentecost is liminal space. There's hardly anything written about those 50 days in the Bible. And yet those days were vitally important for what was to come next in the lives and the ministries of the apostles and the entire church. In a similar way, I believe that God is preparing us with this liminal space between Jesus' ascension and his return for what comes next. God is always preparing us and transforming us into the people we are becoming, shaping us in love and service to others and the world so that we may be ready for the world that God is already bringing into being. In this liminal space, we are reassured that although Christ is not present with us as fully as we'd like him to be, he is nevertheless with us. He's here in these real virtual gatherings of the church. He's here in our altered and sometimes irregular communion practices. He's here in the relationships that we are making and maintaining and even deepening in the midst of quarantine and social distancing. He's here in the faces of neighbors who come to our aid and in the faces of our neighbors in need. It might be a Zoom kind of relationship that we have with him for right now, but it is real. And it holds, uh, it holds in it the promise of a fuller, more life-giving presence to come one day when we get back to normal. just lost my bulletin. That's unfortunate. Let's try that again. Here we go. I invite you to, uh, to join with me in confessing your, our trust in the one who is with us, though he is absent, using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, became incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O God, call your people to be one, as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your promise, the love of our neighbors, and the call to proclaim your gospel to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding and leads us to new technologies. People like Nicholas Copernicus and Leonard Euler, whom the Church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enact your justice among the nations of the earth. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only about when this pandemic threatens us. Open ways beyond timidity and fear that too easily ignore our neighbor. Protect the vulnerable, especially those suffering from oppression, poverty, and hunger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, that was exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I'm kind of assuming you all experienced the same thing I did. The uh, power went out briefly there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just keep going with this. If you're uh, not everybody's back on yet, and it might take a while for folks to restart computers and such, but um, I'm going to go ahead and go. And uh, hopefully uh, those of you who were not able to get on live can catch up with us. So, All right. We're going to continue um, the prayers where we left off. All right, let us pray. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid. May they rest their anxieties in your care. We pray especially for those dearest to us, especially for uh, Rose and Courtney and Riley May, and for our Muslim siblings as they celebrate Eid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who have risked their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad, and assure them of your never-failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. We give you thanks for all the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you as we await the resurrection together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray 
into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. the gun a little bit. Sorry, the power outage threw me off. Before we get to the offertory, I wanted to say um, that as we each prepare the elements for Holy Communion in our homes, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who has contributed to the ministry of Agnus Day uh, with your tithes and your offerings. Our congregation is learning more about how to use online platform platforms like YouTube and Zoom and those tools are allowing us to connect with one another in our community in ways that we could never have imagined. So thanks to your generosity, we're able to not only maintain what we had before COVID, but actually expand on what we're doing and connect with new people. We look forward to continuing to do this into the future. If you'd like to join me in helping this ministry continue to grow, I invite you to follow the link in the video description below to donate your gift now. Even though we can't be present together physically right now, we can still bring our gifts together to do God's work. And that, in its own way, is a beautiful metaphor of what the church is doing. Now, we will have our offertory. One more example of how technology is both wonderful and also so terribly inadequate. Thanks for being back with us. Let us pray. Alleluia. Glory to you, O God, from whom or glory to you, O God. From the garden to the wilderness, through exile, oppression, and return, you have delivered your people time and again. From the grip of death. In the depth of darkest night, your word has shone as a beacon through your servants, the prophets, promising love and life in the face of death. That light became flesh and lived among us in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ, who was raised up from the earth to draw all people to himself. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
Reveal yourself to us, O God, in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up with Jesus as the body of Christ for the world. Believing in the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and join with all your saints scattered in houses and apartments and even in graves in the feast which has no end. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. If you are not receiving Holy Communion with us today, um, then please receive this blessing. May the ascended Lord Christ, who sits at the right hand of God, live in your heart always. If you are receiving communion this morning, then hear these words of promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Because I forgot it earlier and because I think it's important, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God who has brought us from death to life fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Once again, I'd like to thank you for being a part of our worship service today. Uh, if you found today's service meaningful, please subscribe to our channel so you can easily find us and watch, our other, watch and like our other videos. If you've already subscribed, thank you for doing so. Uh, doing that helps other people find us on YouTube. You can find us here every Sunday live at 9.45 a.m. and the recording will remain up. Uh, you can also worship with us uh, at 6 p.m. every Wednesday evening as we pray Vespers us using Holden Evening Prayer. We'd love for you to be connected with our other ministries as well. This week we have Wednesday Bible Study focusing on the readings for the coming Sunday. 
Uh, the prayer shell knitting group meets on Wednesdays, and the women's gathered Bible study. Uh, all those things happen via Zoom. Uh, you can find uh, links to those meetings on our website, as well as ways that you can connect to other ministries, such as uh, helping the Gig Harbor Food Backpacks for Kids program, or donating to the local food banks. Our website is www.agnusdeilutheran.org. Just click the button that says Socially Distanced Connecting to find how you can get uh, involved with those things. Our building may be closed, but as I said earlier, the church is still open. Finally, I have two favors to ask. <clears throat> First, we'd like to hear your stories. If you have a story of where you've seen God at work in, during this time uh, or in the last week, or if you'd like to share a story about how your faith or this congregation or uh, what or something else has been helping you through this quarantine, I would love for you to record yourself uh, briefly between uh, two to four minutes uh, to share that story so that we can use it as a part of our worship. You can email me at pastorseth at onustaylutheran.org and I will help you with the details of how to uh, get that to me. Uh, second, as our congregation has been adjusting to virtual gatherings and digital ministry, we've been working on how to make our online giving and our website easier to use and navigate. Later this summer, we are planning to launch a new website and we'd like your help. Uh, Cindy is going to be sending out an online survey this week to ask how you use our website. That information will help it make it easier to navigate and easier to find things. The survey will take about two minutes. It's very, very short. Um, if you would be so kind, just click the link and fill it out and you'll be helping the whole congregation uh, by helping us uh, figure out um, what people go to the website to look for and how, they, how to help them find it. We'll be keeping you all in the loop uh, as to the progress of this changeover. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in the peace of Christ, sharing the good news. Amen. I invite you to share that peace with someone you know, with a call or a text or an email or by sending them the link to this video, uh, and today it would actually be both the last video and this one, or just our YouTube channel, <laughs> so that they can worship with you. God bless you in your week.